In this video, we're going to talk about nine common annoying mistakes that people make when 3D printing. Number one, touching the 3D printer's build plate. If you rub your oily and grimy hands on the build plate, it could ruin the bed adhesion and your prints might not stick to the build plate. When removing parts from the build plate, try to use a tool and avoid touching the build plate too much. It's much easier to remove prints if you have a flexible build plate like this. But if you ever have a stubborn print that won't release from the build plate, I recommend using some tools like these pliers or one of the metal spatulas that may have come with your 3D printer. Just be careful when using the sharp metal tool because you don't want to ruin your bed. And if you have touched your 3D printer's bed too much and there's a lot of grease on the build plate, the best way to clean it is with warm, soapy water. There's also a lot of people that recommend using these textured PEI build plates, but I've had a lot of success just using these standard build plates. However, you may still have to use a glue stick to get the best bed adhesion. Number two, not leveling your 3D printer's bed properly. This one issue may trip up beginners the most, especially if you don't have an advanced 3D printer that has automatic bed leveling. There's nothing worse than buying a new 3D printer, assembling it, and trying to 3D print something and it just doesn't work. The number one problem with new 3D printers not printing correctly is not having the bed leveled properly. The very first video on my channel is how to level your 3D printer's bed and it has helped thousands and thousands of people. However, I have to admit that video is a little bit outdated so I'll need to make an updated version soon. The most common and tried and true method for leveling your 3D printer's bed is the paper method. If you're watching this video a few years in the future, leveling your 3D printer's bed may be a thing of the past. I usually recommend saving up a little bit more to get a 3D printer that has automatic bed leveling. It makes the whole experience of 3D printing so much better. Number three, printing way too fast. A lot of the newer 3D printers can print really, really fast and it may be tempting to put it on at ludicrous mode. Even if you don't have a new 3D printer, you may be tempted to crank the speed higher and higher to save on print time. There's pretty much a direct correlation between how fast you print and the quality of your 3D printed object. But the baseline speed may differ from printer to printer. For example, the Creality Ender 3 can easily print at 50 millimeters per second, whereas the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon can print at about 200 to 300 millimeters per second. So usually I would recommend starting at the default print speed and as you get more and more comfortable with your 3D printer, you could slowly try to ramp up the speed. For example, when the Ender 3s were my main 3D printers, I would print at about 80 to 100 millimeters per second with no print quality issues. I have since upgraded to the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbons and I usually just print on default and I rarely ever go to sport mode or even ludicrous mode. But maybe after a while of using these machines, I'll feel a little bit more comfortable cranking the speed. Number four, printing with the wrong material settings. This is a really sneaky mistake and it happens to the best of us. I can't tell you how many times I thought I had a clogged nozzle or I thought I was dealing with heat creep, but in the end, I was just printing at PETG using PLA settings. This usually happens because I mostly print with PLA, but I have a couple of PETG spools on my shelf. PETG requires a much higher printing temperature compared to PLA. And if you try to print PETG with PLA settings, you'll notice that the extrusion isn't the best. You could even print with the wrong material settings depending on what brand of 3D printer filament you're using. No 3D printer filament is exactly the same and it's a good idea to always check the recommended print settings on the package of your filament. What's really cool is that some of the newer high-end 3D printers can automatically detect what 3D printer material you're using so you don't have to worry about the print settings. Number five, not considering the print orientation. Let's say you wanna three print something like this L bracket right here. You take your L bracket and you drag it into your slicer and you go ahead and click slice. You preview it and everything looks good and you go ahead and click print. And while this might technically work, there is definitely a better way to print this object. If we change the orientation of the object in our slicer, we'll get a stronger 3D printed object and we won't have to print with supports. It's stronger because now the layer lines are going in this horizontal direction instead of it printing up like this. And 3D printed parts are definitely weakest along the layer lines. Another added benefit is that it prints much, much quicker. It's also really important to consider the surface finish that you want on your object. Curved surfaces are notorious for showing layer lines, but if you turn your object sideways so all the curves are on its side, you'll get perfectly smooth curved lines. This is much better than having it look like some sort of topographical map. Number six, 
not storing your 3D printer filament properly. One of the worst things you could do with a spool of 3D printer filament is tangle the filament strands. It just takes the smallest amount of effort to put the filament strand through one of these holes on the side of the plastic reel. There's also a lot of fairly clever designs that people have come up with to help their 3D printer filament not tangle. Number six, adjusting the infill percentage instead of increasing the wall count for getting stronger prints. If you want to increase the strength of your 3D prints, it's best to increase the wall count. By default, most slicers have a wall count of two, but you can increase it to three, four, five, or even six if you want much stronger parts. Or if you want to 3D print something incredibly strong, you could use a better material and print it at 100% infill. For example, this part here is 100% solid PACF. That's carbon fiber reinforced nylon. And while this does get you an incredibly strong part, it is a lot more expensive. When you're still in the prototyping phase of your project, just use two walls and use lightning infill. And then once the design is finalized, then you can increase the part strength to save on material. Number eight, cleaning the 3D printer's build plate with isopropyl alcohol instead of just using warm soapy water. Everywhere you look online, you'll see tons of articles and forums suggesting to use isopropyl alcohol to clean your 3D printer's build plate. However, there's really no reason why you'd need to use isopropyl alcohol instead of warm soapy water. If you're using glue stick on your 3D printer's bed to help with bed adhesion, the material of the glue stick is PVA, and PVA is highly soluble in water, and it's actually less soluble in isopropyl alcohol. And what about removing grease or oil from the build plate? What's better, warm soapy water or isopropyl? isopropyl alcohol. If you have a build plate that could easily be removed, it's much better to use warm soapy water. Here's why. When you wash your build plate with warm soapy water, you're completely washing off all of the broken down grease molecules. If you simply wipe down the build plate with isopropyl alcohol, some of the grease gets wiped away. However, when the isopropyl alcohol evaporates, it can leave some grease contaminants. So there's really no benefit to using isopropyl alcohol over warm soapy water. Number 9. 3D printing parts or components for outside use out of PLA. PLA has a very low melting point which makes it really easy to 3D print, however the downside is that it could easily warp in high temperature environments. And while you could technically print parts for outdoor applications out of PLA, and I have had some success with this, it's best to use a better material like ASA. The downside is that these materials are much more expensive and they're more difficult to 3D print. Alternatively, you could just use PETG or ABS, except ABS is susceptible to UV damage. Number 9. Adjusting the slicer settings too much. It's very tempting when getting a new 3D printer or after watching a lot of 3D printing videos on YouTube to really want to overly calibrate your 3D printer or adjust too many of the slicer settings. Most 3D printers have really good slicer profiles by default and you can get really good print quality without changing any settings. And that's the top nine 3D printing mistakes that a lot of people get caught up in. I hope you found this video helpful. My name is Steven and happy printing.